And we thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In spite of what you're going through, Uh in spite of what it feels like, God is good. And he is worthy of all of our praise. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. I don't know about you. Amen. But that song ministered to me. God is not defeated. Hallelujah. Now y'all know why our slogan is because of Jesus, we always win. It's because he's never defeated. Hallelujah. And that's because of the God that's on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy to be ready for the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I truly thank God for all of you. Amen. And God is good. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I want to minister. Amen. From the book of Daniel this morning. Daniel chapter 3. Yes, God. Amen. <laughs> We're going to do a little bit of reading this morning. Amen. I'm an apostle who normally read eight verses, but today we're going to read like ten, I think. Amen. 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 Daniel chapter three, beginning at verse eight, and I'm reading the NIV version. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. Isn't it something how people always add, amen, they put their little two cents in, they pay no attention to you. It's obvious that they paid attention and you'll see why. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who pays no attention to you, your majesty? They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of the gold that I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image, I made very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the blazing furnace the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Amen. This morning, amen, for a subject I will use when God shows up. When God shows up. Amen. Apostle, the Los Angeles Times has released an article on the seven stages of severe COVID. And the article with these seven stages, the first stage, it says, you had symptoms for a few days, but now it's hard to breathe that you go to the emergency room. Your oxygen saturation levels tells you you need help. A supplemental flow of liters of oxygen they'll give you. They'll give you steroid shots or they'll give you some antibodies. And then they'll admit you for a few days. If you get better, then they'll release you and you survive. Stage two, it becomes harder and harder for you to breathe. You feel like you're drowning, they describe it as. 
Many patients describe the feeling as they can't breathe and they feel like they're drying, drowning. The bronchiolator treatments they give you provide little relief. The oxygen requires increase significantly. Your oxygen saturates rapidly. It declines when you move about. They transfer you to the intensive care unit. Stage three. You're exhausted from hyperventilating to satisfy your body's demand for air. So they put you on a non-invasive, positive pressure, ventilation. A big bulky face is scrapped around a mask around your face is velcroed around your face. So the machine can efficiently push pressure into your lungs to pop them open so that you get enough oxygen in it to deliver. Stage four, your breathing becomes even more labored. We can tell you're severely fatigued. The arteries, blood flows, it draws, they draw more blood from you to see where your blood level is. And it's normally critically low. They prepare to intubate you if you are able to and if you're able to stand their time, they will suggest that you call your loved ones. And this is probably the last time they will hear your voice. Stage five. Some patients survive stage four. Unfortunately, your oxygen levels and overall condition have not improved after several days of the ventilator, your COVID invested lungs need assistance and time to heal. Something that an ECMO machine, which bypasses your lungs and oxygenates your blood, can provide, but at last, our community hospitals does not have that capacity. And normally they try to transfer you, but all of the hospitals are so filled and overwhelmed right now, they can't transfer you anywhere. Stage six, the pressure required to open your lungs is so high that the air can leak through your chest cavity. So they insert tubes to clear it out. Your kidneys fail or filter the byproducts from the drugs, and then you need dialysis. In spite of taking the diuretics, they do not work. And so your body begins to swell all over. Stage seven, after several meetings with the palliative care team, your family decides whether to withdraw care. And if they decide to withdraw care, the team is inside of your room and they're working, but at the same time, they hear the cries from your family and they hear the screams, and then they, they say that they're in there working, and what they do, they'll FaceTime your family, and that's when everybody is, you know, sad and emotional and hear all of this crying and they do what they can do while they are in the room as they extubate you, the patient. Hallelujah. Now that's the Los Angeles Times. And that was from a worker that has worked in this field some time ago. Amen. And that's what she's experienced because what they do, they're doing experimental therapeutic they're experimenting. But how many of you are glad, amen, that God is in control? I stand before you today, amen, hallelujah. I want to give you seven steps, amen, hallelujah, to apply to your life. Hallelujah, the first thing, amen, hallelujah, that you want to do is that you want to repent. Hallelujah for everything, hallelujah, that's not like God and everything that you could have did to offend God. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so number two is ask God to come into your heart to save you, to clean you up, to keep you, to shield you and protect you. Hallelujah, to make sure, amen, that you're on the right side, on the winning side, that you are in him and he is in you. Hallelujah. And so, Apostle, oh, glory to God. And then you got to have a prayer life, number three. Forget the stages. You need the steps. Hallelujah. And so when you pray, hallelujah, I'm going somewhere. It's almost like the Hebrew boys, amen, when we get to them. 
But you got to pray daily without ceasing more than one time. Sometimes it's more than two or three times. But you've got to pray daily. You got to also throw fasting in there, which is number four. Amen. Because sometimes prayer and fasting, amen. Things don't work when you just pray, but when you fast, when you turn your plate down, amen, you begin to move God. You begin to get his attention. Tears don't move God. He has compassion. Amen. But faith moves God. So when you stand back and then you fast, amen, you've, get, you've gotten God's attention. Amen. Number five, I learned through this where... A mask. Wear a mask. Because we're still in a pandemic. Hallelujah. Wear a mask. And then sooner or later, okay, Pastor, get vaccinated at some point. Amen. Number seven. Number six was get vaccinated. Number seven, trust in the Lord. You got to trust. In the Lord. And when you trust in the Lord, it leads me to Daniel chapter 3. Hallelujah. Apostle, chapter 3, amen, when King Nebuchadnezzar, he builds this big statue of gold of himself. Of himself for the people, amen, to bow down and worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What sense does that make for you to build a gold statue so big? Amen. That you're so narcissistic that you're going to build something for someone to, hallelujah, worship you. And then you always have folk that want your place. Notice what happens after the elevation. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, amen, these were Hebrew boys, amen, they're in Babylon now, amen, and now they have Babylonian names. They have changed their names, amen, amen, from their original Hebrew names to now these names are Babylonian names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, amen, and here it is, they're friends of Daniel, and we're in the book of Daniel, amen, hallelujah, but you don't see Daniel in this particular chapter. And so Daniel is still working, but he is at the gate with the king because he worked with the king as well. And, and so the Hebrew boys was out in the province with the other people. And so they had the commandment because most people ask that question, where was Daniel when the Hebrew boys got thrown into the fire? Well, he was at the king, but he wasn't required to bow down. And so here it is. They said, when you hear the music play, you need to bow down. But you know, you always have the accusers of the brethren that's going to come and go and tell on you. You know how it is. You know, when you in church and folk go tell apostle on us, you know, somebody going to tell your supervisor on you because you was late. You know, she showed up late. Folk always want to tell on somebody. Always. Go in and tell somebody. Go tell your spouse they saw you somewhere. Go tell your person that you dating. You know, I saw so-and-so somewhere. Because, it's, because they want your position. They want your place. They're jealous of you. Hallelujah. You don't have to tear nobody down to build yourself up. Hallelujah. And so here they are. <clears throat> because if you was bound down when the music was playing, how did you see what they are not doing. If you're bowing down and you're out prostrate, you can't see. It means that evidently you didn't bow down. But nevertheless, if they go to the king and they say, you know, these three ain't paying you no attention. They, they paid attention. And the reason why I said they paid attention is because the God that they serve required them to bow to no other God, to worship no other God, and they didn't bow down, not because they didn't pay attention, but because they paid attention. They heard what he said, but they were obedient to God. Amen. And to follow what God said. Some of you need to learn how to stand like the three Hebrew boys stood. Amen. They stood on the promises of God. They stood on the word of God. Amen. If you don't stand on the word of God, you will fall for anything. You better learn how to stand on what God said to do. 
He said to worship me and don't put no other gods before me and don't worship no other God. Amen. Some of us, amen, we follow every wind and doctrine, amen, that does not pertain to the will of God or the Bible or what has been left for instructions for the Christians, for the saints. If you say you belong to Christ, you ought to look Christ-like. You ought to look like him. You ought to sound like him. Amen. You ought to talk like God. Amen. You ought to act like him. Hallelujah. I'm trying to see some fruit on some folk. Amen. Because you know what? You look like Nebuchadnezzar. Hallelujah. You ought to be looking Christ-like. And so they stood on the word of God. And so amongst everybody else, amen, in the prophets, apostle, hallelujah, they didn't bow. So the king said, okay. I guess they didn't understand the commandment. Go get them. So they bring them into the king's chamber. Amen. And he said, I'm going to say this again. I guess y'all didn't comprehend the first time. When the music play, what you need to do now, you need to bow down. The music plays. Hallelujah. They still stand and don't bow. Now the king is really furious, embarrassed. He probably, you know, he has pride. You know, that they're defying what he's saying or going against what he said. No, but they're honoring what God said. These young men, they love the Lord. They were in Babylon, but they still had God in them. Hallelujah. And they trusted the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. You got to do the same thing. Though your situation may look shady, you got to stand on the word of God. You got to trust God through it all. Hallelujah. The awesome thing is they stood Still not bound. Until it's something when you get a word from the Lord and you stand on it. Just because it didn't happen today doesn't mean it won't happen. You got to stand. And after you stand, stand again and stand there for it. Keep standing. And he said, bow down. The music is playing. They didn't bow. So he gets upset. He have them bound. He tell the people he, he so oh, he want to make haste to throw them in this fiery furnace. He said, turn it up seven times harder than it's normally turned up. Isn't it something that the plot, the, the, uh, the plot that somebody has for you, they're going to fall into it? The dish that somebody has dug for you, they're going to fall into it and not you. God is so awesome. This battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the thing that I often think about that, that God brought to my attention, Apostle, is that, amen, when you're standing for Christ, things that bother other people don't move you. Amen. And just because everyone else is doing it doesn't make it right. And I'm so glad that these three, they were leaders. They didn't follow what everyone else was doing. Because just because the crowd or the majority is doing it doesn't make it right. And the majority of those people in Babylon, they bowed down to that statue. Amen. Amen. But Daniel didn't have to, and these three did. So they get bound and they thrown into the fire. The king told the people, and so the ones that threw them in the fire, they got consumed. King Nebuchadnezzar, he looks into the fire. He said, didn't we not throw but three into the fire? Well, why is it that I see four? In the fire walking around. Loosed. They bound them going in. But when he looked in there, they were free. They were no longer bound in the fire. The thing that I want you to know this morning is when God shows up on your behalf. Hallelujah. He come to free you. The thing that came to harm you can't touch you. What was meant to hurt you, it can't come near you. What was meant to hurt you, you don't look like what you've been through. You don't look like what you're going through right now. Some of you are in the fire right now, but you don't look like it. Some of you are in the fire right now, but you don't smell like it. Some of you are in the fire right now. Hallelujah. Your money is funny. Your change is strange. Amen. Relationship tore up from the floor up, but you don't look like it. Hallelujah. God is so good. Situations change when God shows up. When God shows up, there is so much life in him that the power of God, amen, things have to come alive. And because of you, 
things changing, he showed up just because you were in there. Had not you been there, amen, God wouldn't have even shown up. Hallelujah. If you're on a job and you're protected on that job, it's because you're there. Hallelujah. When you left, amen, God left with you. The thing that I love about God, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah, I need, I need to use about five people. Hallelujah. Thank the Holy Ghost. At all. <laughs> Pastor Russian, amen, is representing the person that's going through. Hallelujah. But I'm going to show you what God does amen. when he shows up. Amen. Pastor Lamar and Evangelist Candace, when Pastor Russian, wherever she goes, Janae and Pastor Lamar and Evangelist Candace, wherever Pastor Russian, Pastor Russian, take a step up front. Y'all step up front too. Step to the right, Pastor. Step to the left. Step backwards. Wherever she goes, God is already with her. Yeah. Janae, get in the front of her. And wherever she goes, you go. Back up, Pastor. But if she falls, if she falls backwards, he's going to catch her because God is still here. Though she may fall back to some things that she did in her past, but God is still here to catch you. He's got your front. He's got your side. He's got your back. You're covered. So it doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter what pitch you're in. God is still there. So if you backslide, he's still there. So when you get back up, he's still there. So he's in front of you when you go in your future. He's with you in your current state, in your present. And if you look back in your past, he's still with you. When God shows up, God will never leave you, nor forsake you. Ah, Rabbi Shoko. Glory to God. That you're protected. That you're shielded all around. There are angels that's covering you. The power of the Holy Ghost. Angels. God has dispatched angels to cover you. Wherever you go, you, you can't see your angels, but you're surrounded. Wherever you're going, you're covered just like this. When God shows up. But he only shows up for his children. He only shows up for those that seek him. He only shows up for those that have accepted him in. He only shows up, my God, for when you call out to him. He won't leave you. And so they're walking around in the fire. He said, the fourth man looks like the son of God. How did he know what the son of God looks like if he worshiping himself? Because that means he's been watching Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego worship and praise the Lord for some time now. And now he sees that their God has delivered them. Hallelujah. From his hand. From the trap that he set for them. And it didn't work. Don't you know that some people have set some traps for you, but it didn't work. Because God showed up. Ah, glory. Hallelujah. Because the Lord showed up. Thank y'all so much. And when God shows up, he will deliver you out of the hand of the enemy. He will keep you. What I love is how God comes in so many different forms. God didn't show up early. Some people preach this and they preached it wrong and they said that God showed up early because God, because Jesus showed up early because he only comes in Matthew. No, Jesus was in Genesis too. He said, let us 
make man in our image. But God sent his son on time. Don't you know when God shows up, he's never late. When he shows up, he's always on time. We serve a timely God. And what I love is that in Daniel chapter 3, when these boys were going through what they're going through, Daniel wasn't there. But a few chapters over, in Daniel chapter 6, Daniel went through the same thing. After he got elevated, after he got promoted, amen, and because he wouldn't bow down, hallelujah, he got thrown into the lion's den. And God shut the lion's mouth. God sent an angel. God will show up whether he sent the father, whether he sent the son, whether he sent the Holy Ghost, whether he sent angels, he will show up. It doesn't matter how you show up, I just want him to show up. Hallelujah. And when he shows up, hallelujah. He shows up with all power in his hand. When he shows up, hallelujah, things have to turn around for your good. When he shows up, he doesn't show up to remind you where he brought you from. He doesn't show up, amen, to bring up your past. He doesn't show up to say, you know what, I told you so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a forgiving God. He's a loving God. He's a peaceful God. He's a mighty God. He's a way maker God. He's a healing God. Hallelujah. Because God showed up. Nebuchadnezzar said, hallelujah. You know what? Forget about all this other stuff. We're going to serve the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hallelujah. We're going to serve that Jesus. Hallelujah, that went to the cross for us, that died and got up with all power in his hand. Glory to God. If you're going through something, don't go through it more than three days. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus got up on the third day. In three days, you ought to be getting up with some level of power in your hand. And in your mind and on your heart, you got to get up and you got to stand. It's time for you to stand. You've fallen too much. Amen. Stand on the promises of God. God has greater things for you.